You know my friend Miguel, don't you? The doctor? He has helped a couple of cats. I want to go. What? Why? Have you heard how they treat Mexicans and blacks in the army? The point is, I made my decision. Diego Rivera contains in his blood a cocktail of maps whose olive is Mexico. It should be consumed slowly. To avoid sudden intoxication. I don't think this whole clown thing is working out for me anymore. And I have studied my whole life for this. This is all I ever wanted to do. I mean, I was with the Ringling Brothers Circus for eight years. And it was wonderful. Clowns are supposed to be happy. Soon learn that Pablo Escobar is not one to trifle with. According to Pablo's son, an associate had double-crossed Pablo, and he decided to even the score. Hi, welcome back to Black Art Matters. I'm Tatiana Lucia Gant. I am the new program assistant here with the Education and Community Partnership Department. I'm so excited to be joining you here today because today we are doing a very special takeover. So for the next four weeks, we will actually be celebrating Latinx Heritage Month, which takes place September 16th through October 16th, celebrating the variety of cultures, holidays, traditions, and celebrations within the Latinx community. Today, celebrating with us, I have a very special friend, my friend Omar Padilla. Hello, Tatiana. Bienvenidos, Omar. Oh, muchas gracias, and thank you so much for having me here. It's We're a pleasure. We're so excited to have you. Yeah, yeah, finally. <laughs> Omar, tell me a little bit about yourself. So I know from working with you as an actor that you're an actor, but tell us more. Yeah, well, I am uh, mainly an actor, yes. Uh, I'm also a writer, uh, I'm a producer, and uh, I am a teaching artist. Uh, I moved to Dallas, Texas 12 years ago, and uh, I studied back in Mexico communications, believe it or not. No so, uh, yeah, this is something that uh, I've been doing for the past uh, seven years, you know, working in theater and uh, TV and film as well. So did you start working in acting when you were in Mexico or when you moved here to the United States? Well, I started working as an actor, obviously, well, not working, but I started acting, obviously, on uh, school shows, you know? My very first school show was uh, Beauty and the Beast, and uh, can you guess which one I was? Were you Lumiere? <laughs> Yes. No way! <laughs> <laughs> I auditioned for The Beast, but they gave me oh. the part of Lumiere. And uh, yeah, uh, ever since then, I, I found that I really enjoyed uh, performing. Uh, more than performing, entertaining. You know, uh, I found that that was a, a true passion, and I, I decided to, to keep going with it. But yeah, in Mexico, there was a time where I just got an, uh, an inclination for TV and film more than uh, theater. I wanted to, you know, uh, be a TV host or do commercials and stuff uh, like that. So, so I decided to, to study at communication. Uh, it was not until I moved to Texas that um, I found my, my true call with, with theater. Wow. You know? yeah. So when you moved to Texas, what was the first opportunity where you started actually acting or being on stage? Um, well, it was uh, Teatro Dallas, like you know them very well. Um, they opened the doors. The founder, Cora Cardona, uh, gave me my first opportunity as a, as a theater actor. And uh, yeah, that took me to other opportunities, you know. Uh, Teatro Dallas was a great place uh, to start. And uh, I worked with, only with them for two years. And then... Uh, I started, you know, trying with different theater companies around DFW, uh, such as, you know, Caramia Theater, Theater Arlington, Under Main, Ocker House, so on. Yeah, and you've walked, you've now worked all around town at this point. I tried to keep as busy as possible, yeah. And uh, I've been uh, some way lucky 
but also uh, it takes determination, you know, and uh, being able to, you know, commit to this, to this job, to this industry. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you, since we're celebrating Latinx Heritage Month, what do you think being Latino means to you? Um, well, it is my identity, so it is something that follows me everywhere, uh, and I am very proud of it. But it also uh, brings a sense of responsibility, you know, and not necessarily defines me completely as a person, you know, before I am a Latino, I am a male, you know, but before I am a male, I am a human, you know, so not just my race or my gender define me uh, as a human being, you know, but, but it definitely uh, brings me a lot of joy to say I am a Latino, I, uh, I speak the beautiful language of Spanish, you know, and sort of English, you know, uh, but... Um, you speak wonderful English. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but yeah, I, I have to say, I find that Latinos community, Latin community here in the United States, is, uh, it's, um, it has a sense of, you know, pride much uh, bigger than in my own country, in Mexico. I mean, we are obviously very proud to be Mexicans, to be Latinos, we celebrate our traditions, you know, our history. But when I moved to Dallas, I discovered that a lot of uh, Latinos, a lot of Latin community feel the need to, to speak up, you know, maybe because they feel the need of, uh, you know, I belong in this country, this land is also my land. Whether as, you know, in our own countries, I was born there, I grew up there, and uh, I definitely belong there, you know. But here is a, is a little different, and uh, and I respect that a lot. Yeah. yeah. And how do you think that your experiences, both in Mexico and here in the U.S., how do you think that's shaped kind of your perception of the arts and theater? Um, it is a challenge, to be honest. Uh, but I love challenge. Uh, that is something that. I believe not just to me, but to every human being makes them much more stronger. So I, th I always think that the bigger the challenge, you know, the more satisfaction you're going to get. Um, and yeah, I definitely, I knew it was going to be a challenge, uh, first of all, because it is not my, my well, English is not my original language. And I knew that there was going to be some kind of challenge to audition for parts, you know, that probably are not mainly greeting for, for Latinos, right. you know? Uh, so I knew there was going to be more work than if I was in my, in my own country. But uh, weirdly enough, I found that there is a lot of opportunities here in Dallas, Texas. Somebody told me one day, do you know that there's actually more theater companies here in Dallas than in New York? I was like, no, come on, really? <laughs> but I, I mean, I don't know if it's true or not, but I discovered that there is theater for everyone here. You know, there is theater for Hispanic, there is theater for black people, there is theater for white people, for the LGBT community, for older people, for yo younger audiences. Yeah. So I, I, I think that is something really nice that, uh, people from here should be proud of. Um, and me, as a Mexican living in Dallas, find it very fulfilling, you know, because uh, I don't have to go only to the Hispanic theater companies, you know. Now I can see that other opportunities come from even white theater companies, you know, like they're, they're offering parts that uh, are not necessarily for Latins, but you know? But they're open now. Are you feeling that you're being cast in more roles that aren't Latina specific or aren't also like Spanish speaking specific? Because right now you're working at Shakespeare Dallas. You're working on yeah. a Shakespeare show to have gone from not knowing the language to then having to act in English and then having to act Shakespeare yeah. in English is like. When you said the bigger the challenge, the bigger the success, you must feel so proud of yourself. I. That's I do. incredible. I, I do. I honestly do because I never thought I was, you know, fitted to do Shakespeare. Yeah. Uh, I was always afraid to do Shakespeare because, like you say, it's 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 a it's a different kind of English that even for English speakers is is not easy. Right. 
I have to do extra work already. Yeah. Like I can't imagine because I've never done Shakespeare or in Spanish. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine the extra work I would have to do in order to make sure that I was understanding this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, old English. I yeah. was very fortunate to um, to work with uh, Shakespeare in the bar and Shakespeare mm-hmm. everywhere and al- al- altered Shakespeare before working with Shakespeare Dallas because. It was kind of a training, you know, uh, since it's a little more casual, you don't feel the uh, the fear of, oh, I have to do this perfect, because those kind of companies have this, um, you know, this type of theater where if you forget the line, you can ask for the line <laughs> and everyone has to drink or something. So it's very casual, it's very warm. Uh, I enjoy so much working uh, with uh, everyone at those companies. And it was kind of a training. Uh, I was very afraid, though. You know, my first Shakespeare work was uh, King Lear, and they offered wow. me the part of the the fool, which I I thought, oh yeah, maybe it's going to be like a you know small part, uh, very few lines, but it was actually like super important. Okay. And the chemistry that I had with the with the actor who played King Lear was was really was really nice. So so I enjoyed. It. And now that I'm in Shakespeare Dallas. Um, yeah, it feels, uh, I feel re- very proud, not just for me, but there's also three other uh, Latinos in the, in the cast. And I can tell that, you know, directors and uh, theater companies are, you know, in the look of, of theater people to have in their cast. So that's, that's good. Yeah, you know? that's so exciting. Yeah. So have you ever gone back and done any work as an actor in Mexico? And if so, how has that experience been different than here in the U.S.? Um... Well, like I said, in Mexico, I, di- I didn't have the opportunity to do much theater. Uh, I only did, you know, uh, theater in, in uh, elementary school, high school, um, and that's it. So you your know? professional work has been made here. My professional work has all been here in, in, in Texas. Um, but, uh, I mean, it definitely makes me feel like um, I am, you know, I have, I have a voice, you know, and I have a sense of responsibility for for everyone else that is, you know, looking to become an actor in, in this in this country, particularly in Dallas, you know, and if they're Latins. I mean, I have a lot of uh, Latino actors that email me or send me a text like, hey, uh, would you like to, to talk? Uh, I would love yeah. to, to get some kind of insight. How do you get in the, in the industry? Because uh, it's not easy or there's a lot of obstacles or this and that. How do you do it? How, how do you get representation? you know, with an agent and all, all these kind of questions are, you know, things that I ask myself, like, am I going to be able to do it in this country, even though I don't speak perfect English, I don't, you know, uh, I don't look like most of the, of the talent that is in, in commercials, but, uh, but I mean, I, I, again, I, I think I've been lucky enough, uh, but it's a, a mix of, you know, uh, determination as well. So, uh, again, I couldn't compare my work here to, to Mexico but because I didn't work professionally in Mexico. Right. I moved here when I was 24 years old, just out of college. So uh, I, uh, I didn't have much experience in, in right. Mexico other than the school. Are you currently experiencing any anxiety, depression, panic attacks, or phobias? So, Mr. Nicolwise, what seems to be troubling you? And just remember, you're in a completely safe space. You don't need to hold anything back. It's important in order to establish trust between us that you be totally honest. Seems like we're going to have to go pretty far back. Some of the things that inspired me to, to become an artist is the place where I grew up. I, I grew up in, in León, Guanajuato, and León is a city that is... 30, 45 minutes away from the capital, which is the, from the same name, Guanajuato. And Guanajuato is a very cultural place, uh, and, and they, uh, the city hosts a festival, uh, uh, an arts festival every year, in October, actually, so it's about to happen, and it's called Cervantino. 
in honor of uh, Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra, who wrote uh, Quixote and uh, El Cerco de Numancia. It's pretty much uh, the Spanish version of Shakespeare, you know, and uh, every year they host this festival. So ever since I was a little kid, I used to go to this uh, event with my family. And uh, I mean, we were very lucky because this festival brought, it still brings theater companies from all around the world. So we were able to see plays from Germany, from Japan, from Argentina, from Spain, obviously. And so that actually uh, inspired me a lot. I got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, information about, oh, oh my God, it's not just here. There are actually theater companies from all around the world and it's so cool and everyone is so different and everyone has a different style, you know? And uh, so after experiencing this type of festivals, uh, and it's not just the theater, I mean, you can walk on the streets and there are mimes, you know, performing for you. And uh, there are musicians walking on the streets. It's just so beautiful. So it takes over kind of the whole city. Yeah, it's like the whole city. Everywhere is, is the festival. celebrating it's not for just the festival. Like, uh, it's not just like a place that you go there. No, it's the whole city is the festival. And you, you see people from all around the world as well. You, have, you see a lot of Europeans, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, Africans, Asian. It's like the whole world in one small town. And the beauty of Guanajuato is that uh, it is connected by tunnels, you know. So there are also um, like events that happen on the tunnels. They close the tunnels and then they do performances inside the tunnels, which is kind of cool if you're not claustrophobic. Uh, but That's it's uh, so it's cool. really 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 nice. So all these things really really inspired me, and I brought that uh, to my to my family, you know. Uh, I. I discovered that I enjoy so much telling stories. So, I mean, I think I was like eight, nine years old when I started like writing little plays for my for my cousins. I come from a very traditional family, uh, you know, Mexican families, big families with a lot of cousins, a lot of uh, aunts, uncles, all that. So every Sunday after, you know, church, we all used to gather in my grandmother's house and I was always you know, with a small story for my cousins, and I give them parts. Okay, you're gonna be the princess, you're gonna be <laughs> the villain, uh, I'm gonna be the hero, you know, <laughs> obviously, and then just perform in front of our, of, of our family. That's how it was every Sunday for, I don't know, two, three years, like, so I had a very, very happy childhood with, with all my family, and then I exported that to my neighborhood you know like i invited my my friends from my neighborhood to to participate in little plays that i wrote that i got inspiration from movies that i saw you know like the three musketeers or even the quixote or stuff like that i just like wrote little things give them parts and then perform in front of our families and so so i think that's the the seed that i planted when i was a kid i forgot about it for a little while when i was a teen but coming back to Texas, uh, come not coming back, but coming to Texas, I, uh, you know, I, I saw that person in me again, because you know I discovered these theater places that really, really uh, inspired me. You know, so so that's that's pretty much how I grew up and and the the inspiration that I got to to be a performer. That's amazing. And so yeah. when you are telling stories, I do wonder, are you drawn to certain stories, whether you're acting or writing? Do you, are you drawn to specific like topics or ideas? Or is there something that you're always like, oh, I always love exploring this feeling or this? Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I always feel attracted to, to magical realism. Mm. You know, it's something that always, uh, you know, brings my attention because... There's a lot of drama happening in the world, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying that drama is not good to, to be performed or anything like that, but I just think that what draws me more uh, to my attention is the magical realism where we can play with yeah. things that not happen usually in our daily lives, you know. But, but I like all of it. I like uh, comedies, dramas. Just give me a part and I'll do it. <laughs> but yeah, magical <laughs> realism is one of my favorite, favorite things to do. Uh, there's this... Uh, writer, her name is Isabel Allende. Mm -hmm. So it's she it's, Casa de los Espíritus. Yes, so I love it's that. You know, books. Gabriel Mar uh, Garcia Marquez, all that kind of uh, literature. It's what what I really really enjoy. But I think it it goes on like stages. You know, I also had this stage where uh, 
I love reading Stephen King, you know, and, and yeah. mystery and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, I would say uh, my favorite would, would be Magical Realism. We did this show with Caramia in 2017, uh, Yemaya's Belly. Uh, with uh, with Tiana, which I think she was part of this uh, of this uh, series, yeah. series, and she was wonderful, you know. Uh, and it, it included a little bit of uh, of magical realism. So those are the type of uh, of stories that I that I enjoy the most. Yeah. Awesome. Since you've been such a resource to so many people, I do want to ask if you could go back and tell yourself when you were young one thing, what would be your one piece of advice? Um, read, you know, read as much as possible of what passionates you, uh, you know, uh, find mentors. I think, uh, mentors are important in our, li in our life, not just one mentor, because, you know, one mentor can give you enough of his or her time. Uh, one mentor can give you, uh, enough of his or her knowledge, you know, so we have to be like sponges, you know? Uh, absorbing all the the knowledge and experience that our mentors can give us. So so yeah, I think if I if I can talk to Omarcito, <laughs> to the young Omar, I would tell uh, you know be patient, um, but work. You know, read, find your mentors, and enjoy the process as much as possible because. You know, sometimes people are always thinking on how it's going to be when I get there, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they're thinking too much in the future that they're generating stress to their, you know, minds. And I think it's mo much important, most important to enjoy the process, even, you know, even though sometimes it can be difficult and it brings sacrifices, you know. But uh, I, I made a pact with myself uh, a long time ago when I moved to this country, actually. I, I told to myself, you know what, um, you have to do what makes you happy, you know, and uh, don't worry about, you know, money too much. I mean, I know money is important. It pays the bills and everything like that. But that'll come if what you do passionate enough to like, you know, do it every day, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, writing for me is, uh, is so satisfying that I can be three, four, five hours writing, even though I'm, I know I'm not getting any money from this, but you never know, you know? So, yeah, I think those would be some some kind of advice I would give to myself. Just uh, stay there, be passionate, and enjoy every, every, every part of the process. Oh, well, thank you so much, Omar. It's been such a pleasure to have you today. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been wonderful, and uh, I look forward to keep working with you, Tatiana. And you'll see Omar on stage here soon.